Hi, Rich Powell from ClearPath here. I'm going to tell you about one of the biggest advancements in clean energy and climate policy in over a decade, the Monumental Energy Act of 2020. Tucked away in the 5,000-page end-of-year omnibus was a bipartisan clean energy innovation roadmap. The Energy Act modernizes and refocuses the Department of Energy's research and development programs on the most pressing technology challenges. Scaling up clean energy technologies like advanced nuclear, long-duration energy storage, carbon capture, and enhanced geothermal. Crucially, across all of these technologies, DOE is now empowered to launch the most aggressive commercial-scale technology demonstration program in U.S. history. The bill sets up a moonshot of more than 20 full commercial-scale demos by the mid-2020s. It also sets ambitious goals for America to maintain global leadership and increases key clean energy program authorizations by an average of over 50% over the next five years. The Energy Act was an effort spearheaded by Senators Murkowski and Manchin, but it represents dozens of individual bills from many members of both parties in both the House and Senate. The enormous effort took six years to refine the legislation to achieve technical and political realism. While we have included a more in-depth summary of the Energy Act on the page below, I wanted to share five key highlights. First, the Energy Act re-gears the Office of Fossil Energy to focus on carbon capture, utilization, and storage technologies, and authorizes a comprehensive carbon capture R&D program, including six large, first-of-a-kind demonstrations for natural gas, coal, and industrial facilities. In addition, it starts serious research and demonstration on carbon removal technologies via creative X-Prizes on removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Second, it aims to reinvigorate advanced nuclear energy by formally authorizing our Moonshot Advanced Reactor Demonstration Program. And you can't run those reactors without advanced fuel. It also creates a temporary program to provide that HALU fuel. Third, the new law establishes a comprehensive grid-scale storage demo program, effectively authorizing the energy storage grand challenge that Secretary Briette launched at DOE last year and that Secretary Granholm has committed to continuing, along with a joint initiative with the Department of Defense to develop long-duration storage technologies and a program to provide technical assistance to rural and municipal electric utilities. Fourth, it includes significant provisions for advanced, always-on renewables like geothermal energy, including programs to demonstrate technologies to enable geothermal anywhere. There are exciting opportunities to transfer technologies from the oil and gas industry and demonstrate the co-production of critical minerals with geothermal energy. Fifth, the bill includes a comprehensive, cross-cutting, clean industrial technologies R&D program to lower the cost of cleaner chemicals, materials, and manufacturing. As well, it contains significant reauthorizations for solar and wind, critical minerals, grid modernization, tech transfer, ARPA-E, and so much more. In addition to those key clean energy authorizations, the Energy Act also includes important tax credit extensions for key clean energy technologies like carbon capture and offshore wind and a phase out of greenhouse gases called hydrofluorocarbons. We like to look at this bill as a clean energy roadmap for the destination ahead, implementation. American consumers, businesses, and power companies will all benefit from the Energy Act of 2020, once fully funded and implemented, of course. Thanks for watching.